Hi again, I've made it back. I just wanted to come on and talk about my reflections on the beauty industry, particularly after I've been away for a couple years. Stuff has happened, Black Lives Matter has happened, and I think the world is changing. I just feel like I have fresh eyes on the beauty industry now that I've been away for so long, but I've also like had a lot of experience in, you know, seeing stuff come out and being quite invested in new makeup and yeah, having entered this makeup world as a person of color. I basically just want to get the conversation going. I think it's important and I'm, look, I'm only one person. I can only share my personal experience. So I do not speak for all people of color, but this is just me. I do have some notes because I don't want to get like too off track and ranty, but that'll probably happen anyway. So to start off, my name is Mel. I am half Filipino, half Caucasian, and I live in Australia. I was born in Australia, so that's what I feel my cultural identity is. But often, because of the racism in Australia, I've been told, you know, you're Asian, that's what you are, even though I don't actually feel much culturally connected to it. So I would have been about 19, 20 when I first started using makeup. And I avoided it because makeup always looked bad on me because it was, you know, white people were trying to put it on me for dance recitals and it just looked terrible. So I avoided it until I was getting married and I was like, well, I want to, you know, do my makeup. I want to look and feel comfortable. I've been scarred in the past. So I started looking into it and the place I went, obviously, was to research it on YouTube. And I think this was about 2012-ish. And, you know, you had Mac Barbie, you had Michelle Pham was on there a little bit, but not, she wasn't like super trending at the time. There was Fleur de Force. It's hard because these people have changed their names since then, but like Glam, was it Glamzilla or something? I don't remember. There's a lot of popular YouTubers that you probably remember and most of them were on the lighter side or if they were darker, it was like fake tan. It wasn't their skin tone. It took me quite a while to work out that I couldn't follow their tips or routines exactly because it looked ridiculous on me like i don't know if you remember that trend of putting a white in your waterline to make you look more awake well it makes me look like i'm about to like murder someone because it's just like so clashing with my skin tone and a lot of cult products didn't really work for me so like the hula bronzer i mean and you could probably try and build it up and build it up and build it up and mac velvet teddy didn't work for me and these kind of things sometimes i'd buy them online or something or kind of buy them and then get them home and put them on and I would just look a bit funny. You know, sunscreens had a white cast. Face powders, like the Rimmel Stay Matte Powder was so popular. It would leave a bit of a cast on me. Um, I remember like I thought, and I would see people recommend it online, like a great way to start with makeup was to use the Maybelline BB Cream. And they had two shades, as far as I know. And I, like, I bought this more than once because I just thought it would work. They had a light and a medium. And I thought, if anything, I'm a medium. Like, I'm in between, like, a light skin tone and, like, a super dark skin tone. Like, surely I would qualify as a medium. <laughs> it was so light. Like, what I really wanted was a light coverage foundation, and I couldn't find it in my shade. And I think, I like, we didn't have Sephora here. We didn't have Mecca Maxima. We had David Jones and Maya, which are big department stores, and they have really intimidating salespeople there at the makeup counters and like very expensive brands kind of like older people brands like Clinique they have Lancome, Bobbi Brown and it's all very expensive and very intimidating they do have MAC thankfully as well in one of them but yeah I found it very frustrating to like go to the drugstore and try and find a foundation and a concealer or like any sort of BB cream that would match me in particular like even even today sometimes I will find a foundation that's the right depth but then it swings orange, like fake tan orange, rather than more of like my kind of olive undertone. Yeah, I think especially as it oxidizes, it gets more and more orange and I just look ridiculous. So it's one of the reasons I don't wear foundation is because it's so hard to find a good match. Anyway, I found this really frustrating. I found even eyeshadow pal palettes frustrating because people would always set their primer with the matte beige shade. I tried to do that to myself. I did it probably over like a year or so until I realized that I looked ridiculous. I found it really frustrating and it was always my dream to like create like the perfect 
brown girl quad in like a few deeper shades just that was like for the easy everyday kind of makeup look for people who weren't super interested in makeup I just wanted something easy they could just chuck on and it would look flattering anyway over time I got deeper and deeper into the beauty industry and I kind of became blind to it like blind to the racism and like I just would kind of roll my eyes at it and just move on when I was getting PR samples any complexion products man it was so rare to get it in my shade I remember once what was it once one of the drugstore brands like Rimmel or Maybelline or someone no it was L'Oreal once L'Oreal sent me six of their new foundations all of them too light for me and look, I'm not even that dark. I don't even... I remember Maybelline Adrian Wine Concealers when they came out with their much fuller range of, I think, six shades. They gave us all of them and that was good. But so often I would get some things that just wouldn't work. Or often PR companies were trying to get rid of fake tan and they would send it to me. And I was like, have you not even looked at my photo? Because what am I going to do with this? Anyway, I just got used to it, as you do. I was able to kind of recognize what products would and wouldn't work for me and ways I could kind of adapt them to try and make them work for me and I guess the main the majority of the beauty community didn't care like they didn't care as much if a brand came out with a range of products as long as like they found stuff that worked for them they didn't really look sideways to see oh this eyeshadow palette has you know half the shades won't look good on people of color or people of you know like certain deepness so I think when you have like the community not really taking notice you kind of just get used to not uh, thinking about it yourself and you're just you just work with it like you just make it work it's just what it is anyway I left the beauty community mostly because I had a baby and I just makeup was just not practical and I look I didn't even enjoy it that much I didn't have time my baby would you know they kind of grab at your face a lot and stuff I just wasn't <laughs> it just wasn't fit for me anymore and it took almost like two years before I really became interested again and actually wanted to play with makeup from a creative standpoint so that's kind of where I am now so it was like about 2019 was where I was in my prime I guess <laughs> of loving makeup and then now it's 2022 and I'm just coming back into it so my perspective has changed a lot because I have a child now I have a daughter and I think when you have a kid, it just brings back a lot of childhood things that you've forgotten. Now, when I look at children's media, books, TV shows, products, especially advertising, so many white or white passing children are represented and there's so few people of colour and children of colour represented in any form of media, especially baby books. So those baby books that are like a harder kind of cardboard so the babies can't tear the pages. It is so hard to find brown people in them, I'm not even kidding. It's a bit better in America, but I live in Australia. It's really hard to find the dolls that are made for little, like little toddlers, the ones with the soft belly that have, you know, a different skin tone other than Caucasian. I had to pay, I think it was about $45 to get um, an Asian looking doll with a soft belly for my daughter and she loves the doll, we call it Kevin. But you can buy Caucasian, the Caucasian versions of that doll in masses in store for like $10, $12, $15, so ridiculously cheap but I I just didn't want, like we see, we see Caucasian people represented everywhere and I thought my house is one place where we don't need it. <laughs> So I spent the money and I'm really glad I did. It has really highlighted to me how much the world has and hasn't changed since I was a kid and how basically the black lives still don't matter. I think people are definitely waking up to it and I see it a lot in my friends. I live in Newcastle, New South Wales and it's a very like Caucasian kind of community, especially the circles I tend to like socialize in and I can definitely see how they are slowly kind of waking up to the reality that people of color have been living with. I've been trying to show some of my friends that they can be a bit more proactive and thoughtful in the choices of things they buy their children to make sure you know they, they really go out of their way to have people of color represented because it's something that you like it's something you wouldn't notice unless you were affected by, by it. So like if you see people that look like you in books in TV shows and you see you know when you're coloring in you can find a color of crayon on that's called skin color that looks like your skin you don't think about you know the person sitting next to you that can't the thing I've really noticed from the Black Lives Matter movement is that people are starting to you know like open their eyes and just look sideways and see how other people might be experiencing things anyway so I've gone back into makeup and I was kind of expecting for things to have changed 
I think particularly seeing like the, so much hype around having all different skin tones like available for people when I've seen it advertised on Instagram and stuff. And I came back and I was, look, I was disappointed. <laughs> so one of my friends who is a person of color as well, she recommended the Milk Bronzer, the cream bronzer stick in the darker shade for her skin tone. And I was, I'm running low on bronzer. So I was like, I want to try that. Typically I can't buy bronzer from the drugstore or Priceline or anything like that because it's too orange or it's not dark enough. And it's been the case for the whole time I've used makeup. I've tried to use them and they just weren't, they weren't it. Anyway, so we have Sephora here. So I went to Sephora. I was looking around for the milk counter. They only had like quite a small display that someone showed me. I told them what I was looking for, for the bronzer in the darker shade. It was just like on like basic shelves. It wasn't one of those built in like a spot for everything. It was just shelves. They had the lighter bronzer, but they didn't have the darker bronzer. And the lighter one was like wildly similar to my skin tone. I'm not even kidding. Anyway, so I was like, oh, I, I, I need the darker one. I was hoping to, you know, swatch it and stuff. The staff member said to me, oh, we don't. We don't stock it, but you can get it. You can get it online. It's online. And I was a bit like, oh, I was really like, I was hoping to swatch it. I'm like, why? I wish I kind of had to push, push to push. I was feeling really sick at the time because I'm pregnant and that's another story. But I was feeling quite ill and lightheaded at the time. But I wish I had pushed more to ask, like, why? Why don't you have it? Because like, it wasn't even a matter of shelf space. There was shelves. I could visually see there was a lot of shelf space there. So she was kind of like. Sorry, we don't have it. I can try and find something else. And um, obviously they didn't really, anyway. I guess I found it really frustrating because I, I thought things had changed. And the hardest thing as a person of color is color matching products when you can't swatch them in store. So it felt like it was still like perpetuating the issue. So she took me over to the benefit stand and thankfully they did have some stock of the Hula bronzer in caramel, which is still a bit lighter than I would have liked. But she, anyway, the way she's kind of trying to sell it is like, you can build it up, you know, like to get it darker. Um, I, they didn't have the darker shade available. Of course, it was out of stock. Yeah, I think my first experience back into buying makeup was really frustrating. I expected better. I also, I think I just expected there to be more thoughtful options for people of color and there wasn't. I looked around, everything looked the same. Eyeshadow palettes were the same. I could still see so many ways that products weren't made for me. I've been watching a lot of beauty news and I really appreciate how I can see how much their perspective has changed on new releases. So I think what I was saying in the past is people didn't really care if certain products wouldn't work for darker skin tones. They just were a bit blinded by the fact that it worked great for them. And I've noticed the beauty news girls in the past the videos over the past two years now really like explicitly talk about well I really like this eyeshadow palette and it would work great for me but you know these shades aren't gonna work for people of color so what's the point like why have they done this or talking about you know like foundation and concealer ranges that just don't go deep enough or to the right undertones and I really like, appreciate that it makes me feel heard it makes me feel seen but it's also shown me that like, as good as it is that brands are now swatching on multiple skin tones so a lot of brands when you're looking up products online they will have swatches on like a light person someone who's normally just like a bit darker than me like like your typical like fake tan kind of shade and then they'll normally have like a dark deeper skin tone I thought that's good and all, but all it really showed me was that the colors still don't work on darker skin tones because who cares if you're, you're swatching it on them, but they still look they're too like cool toned or too like icy and they just don't complement the, the deeper skin tones. It's great they're swatching it because then I know not to buy it, but you can't just pay lip service by having, you know, like one of the models is a person of color and you've like tried to make the makeup work on them, but it's still not flattering or not flattering unless you spend like a lot of time as a professional makeup artist trying to make it work. Look, I just find it really frustrating that brands are still doing this. They're still coming out with products that they call universal, but they only work for lighter skin tones. One of the biggest things I find frustrating is holiday packs or value sets or face palettes because I can almost guarantee you that they will only include their like most popular shades which are for people of Caucasian skin tones. For example, the Benefit face palettes, any of them will come with like a Hula bronzer 
and maybe like a couple different blushes for example well then what am I what, like what do I what do I do with this or the NARS palettes will come with the Laguna bronzer which I mean could work for me but I'd have to build it up a lot so what do I there's no there's no option for people of color or value packs where you can like potentially save money they have the lighter highlighter in it and the lighter blush and the lighter lip gloss and it it's just frustrating that people of color are still being forgotten in this day and age and I know brands are scared business wise I don't know I guess I take it personally you know it sucks that you have to pay a premium to be able to have access to similar products that other people have and you know people of color are at a financial disadvantage already in general and then when it comes to such a basic thing as makeup or you know even skincare like sunscreen oh my gosh so many sunscreens that claim to be good for all skin tones like no white cast and then you put it on and you've literally got like a white face i just don't understand how brands can still be so oblivious to this and to us it just it's beyond me i think my thoughts in this topic and area will keep growing as i kind of step back into makeup but it really puts me off you know now I'm really careful when I look at eyeshadow palettes because I look at the lighter shades and you know I say to myself well if, like out of an eight pan palette if I can't use three of the shades on me why would I buy it it's, it's such a waste of product and then would love to hear your thoughts a person of color as someone who's not a person of color but has you know kind of had their perspective change particularly through the Black Lives Matter movement. I just want to talk about it and maybe like share some of your frustrations with the makeup industry and how brands can be paying lip service to, you know, inclusivity, but not really following through with it in a meaningful way. I totally do have a bit of personal baggage from that. You know, I think of Charlotte Tilbury and when her stuff was coming out, initially and it was you know everyone loved it and I would just look at it and say well I can't I can't wear it and I so wanted to be a part of it like I wanted to be a part of I don't know the cool kids club and I wanted to try those kinds of products but I just knew it wouldn't work and I think we're past that as a like as a people I think we should I don't think it should be an issue I don't understand why it's still an issue leave me your thoughts and I will see you guys in my next video thank you for watching bye